Hi, and welcome to the Agri-Food Pioneers. We're here to give a voice to companies in the agriculture and food industries who are making a real difference to the environment. And today I'm joined by Dr. Harry Kamalaris, Senior Business Development Consultant at AgriCarbon, who deliver the gold standard of soil carbon measurement. Great, well, welcome, Harry, and thanks for joining us. Uh, hi, Nigel. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for having me on the show. I'm very excited to be here and have this opportunity to introduce the inspiring things that we do here in AgriCarbon to you and your viewers. Great. Well, it's great that you're here. I'm delighted. I'm sure everyone's going to be really interested in what you've got to say. Um, so first of all, can you tell us about AgriCarbon a little bit and your position within the company? How long have you worked there? Um, is it is it an awesome place to work? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, that's the straight answer. So <laughs> uh, now what can I tell you? OK, so right. So just to get it out there from the start, uh, what AgriCarbon does. So we offer an end-to-end -end solution for measuring carbon in, in the soil. Now, why is that important, you, you may ask? I got two words for you, and that's climate change. You guessed it right. So under specific regenerative land management practices, soil has the potential to sequester billions of tons of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Mm. And there are substantial uh, land areas that are suitable for this type of farming ready to deploy today as a major uh, carbon sink. So with that, that is without conflicting uh, with food production. So storing carbon in the soil can help mitigate climate change adverse effects. And this is, this is the why you know, agri-carbon is, uh, is, is here. Now, the journey for us started back in 2019 when Stuart, one of our uh, founders, wanted to measure his own uh, soil carbon uh, for, for his farm, uh, which is near in Dundee, here in Scotland. And now, uh, fortunately for Stuart, as, as it happens most of the, most of the times, uh, one of the world's leading soil scientists uh, and today's agricarbon sea scientist happened to be his next door neighbor. So a lot of so what started as you know uh, uh, an over the fence conversation soon turned into a plan to address the the desperate need for high quality data uh, for soil carbon. Now in the coming years, Stuart met fellow co-founders Annie and, and Alan to form uh, an honestly ideal balance of expertise in the field, all very determined to to help scale this much needed uh, climate uh, solution. And, and this brings us to today and, and, and to, to answer the question about my role uh, within the company. So I've been here for around three months. Uh, it is an amazing place to work. Now with, the, with my background is, so this is mainly in animal science. And then I did my PhD in modeling food production system with a big emphasis in the environmental side of farming. So I then worked for developing calculators for measuring greenhouse gas emissions on the, on the farm level, uh, also in roles focused on nurturing uh, innovative solutions in, in, in the agri-tech sector. And what I now do is, is I'm responsible for agri-carbon's growth, working within the, within the business development team. Great. Sounds sounds brilliant, Harry. Sounds like an exciting role in an exciting company. Um, so it's, you know, why I always start these things with asking why you're here. Why have you been invited on? Why are you an agri-food pioneer? Um, you know, you've given a little bit of information. Um, Harry, um, obviously, um, carbon capture in soil is 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 everyone knows about that now. And it's it's a, obviously it's a very logical and, and fantastic thing to do. Um, but what else? What else you got? So uh, AgriCarbon is, is here today because measuring soil carbon stocks is the first and crucial step to restore organic carbon through, as, you know, as, as I said, regenerative farming practices and rebuilding our planet's uh, soil health. Now, the agricultural sector, as, as you mentioned, is, is in, in a unique position when it comes to tackling the effects of climate change. So where most of the sectors can only talk about ways of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, agriculture can li really take it one step further and lock carbon that would otherwise be on the atmosphere, uh, contributing to climate change, 
into the soil and, and, and into biomass. So making changes in the way we produce food can actually have a very positive environmental impact and help tackle one of the biggest challenges of our times. Now, we are here today as, as AgriCarbon because what, what, we, what we really do is help farmers, landowners, and, and, and the food industry in general to realize the value in, in their soil and, and in turn to unlock uh, the way to support this, this global uh, transition to regenerative farming and, 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 the, and the healthier planet. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So you analyze the soil um, and I take it, you, do you use a drill for that or, or how do you analyze it? Yeah, so we have, uh, we have, we have developed a, a kind of like a, a four step process, right? So just to take it a step back. So in, in, order, to, <clears throat> in order to realize this, this transition, we need to rely on accurate measurement, reporting, and, and verification. So we call this the MRV, right? Mm. So being able to understand uh, how the, the soil organic stock carbon changes. Now, <clears throat> now the, the critical missing link is, is measurement. So, so we have developed a four-step process, right? First thing we do is we do the stratification. And what this is, is, is we decide the appropriate number and location of sampling that is needed to be able to, to capture this change in, 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 in the carbon stocks. And that's always depending on the scope of the project. Then comes the drilling. So you'll be happy for that. Then okay. we have our uh, ATV, so all-terrain vehicles, armed with a hydraulic mechanism for, yeah. uh, for sampling. So we got our field operators visiting the land and 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 do the soil core extraction now i'll help you with that sorry just give me one second now here it is right so oh wow this is, this is my prop uh, i wasn't <laughs> going to bring the the vehicle itself but... we have never had a prop before <laughs> on agri food pioneers i love Good. it yeah so this is this is where it actually uh store the 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 soil core right so this yep. goes up to up to one meter now uh, we use tubes like that to get to get the soil course, and this brings us to the third step. So we ship these back to uh, to to our labs in Dundee. So this is for analysis, and this is where we have our ASCA system uh, because of the you know the world needed just another acronym. No, but but seriously, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, uh, this is this is the magic. Like this is where the magic happens. This. ASCA stands for Automated Soil Carbon Analysis. And this is the, the actual innovation of, of AgriCarbon. So using a lot of automation and robotics, we can process hundreds of samples per day when most of the labs uh, can, can, can look at tens of samples at the same time. And this is exactly why we can offer our service at a, at a fraction uh, of the cost. Okay. Okay, so you find out where you need to drill, you get your samples, you send them to a lab which is highly efficient and can can do a lot a lot more than um, most of the others. Um, and then so what type of things are you testing for in the lab um, and and where are they? Are they, they're in Dundee, you say? Yes, so the the, the lab, I mean I, I call it a lab it, it 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 mostly resembles kind of like you know like a production line so you know everything right. is very automated like people are kind of like you know very very focused in in, in what's happening there's a lot of uh, of 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 quality uh insurance that you know everything everything is happening at a, a, at, a at a very specific uh rate so yeah so 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 with this with this process we ensure transparency right and and we provide as i said like a clear audit trail at each step, so how to decide where to sample, how to take the samples, and 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 how to measure. Now, in terms of of, of what we what we actually what we actually measure, uh, we we are looking at a, at calculating the soil uh, the, the the soil carbon stocks. So, in order to do that, we we measure two things. The first is the soil organic carbon content of the of the sample, and we use a method called Dumas dry combustion. Now there is a number of ways to do it, 
but this is the only method that actually measures soil carbon directly, and it reflects the scientific consensus as the, as the gold standard. Uh, there are other methods based on mass loss on ignition or, or wet digestion, but, but these are found to be prone to, prone to biases. Now, we measure, first of all, we measure, we measure the soil organic carbon content, and then we measure bulk density. Now, now bulk density is, um, is, 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 is very, very important in order to be able to, to accurately calculate the total tons of, of, of carbon stock. So you move from a percentage to tons of carbon stock. So you can make it comparable with, uh, with the rest of carbon uh, accounting. Okay. So you've done the analysis, you tested, um, and then and then you give the results to your customers. Um, and then what, well, now they're armed with that information, what do they do? So this is, this is the important bit, right? So this, this information uh, can give you can give you a very very important uh, baseline, right? So first, first, what you what you what you what you want to achieve is try to understand your your business, right? So for most most of our most of our customers, you you measure using uh, our our robust sampling, which leads to a future proofed baseline for your business. So. There is there is a lot of demand for 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 sequester carbon. Uh, if you look at the newly formed uh, soil carbon uh, value chain, you know, coming from governments, coming from national greenhouse gas inventories, food companies, carbon markets, and even financial institutions. So, so armed with a, with 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 a very robust baseline, you can actually look at a at at, at a business decision what to do with the carbon. That you're actually sequestering. So after you get the report, then you can actually plan the resampling and help you create carbon credits that you can actually monetize. Okay, so that's the return on investment, the carbon exactly. credits. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of farmers that watch this, so they'll be um, they'll be happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> and the the other thing that the farmers will be um, will be conscious of his time because they've never got any is this a laborious process is is it going to take up much time on that when you when you do the testing or before when you're planning to do the testing any of that business no i mean i mean to be honest what we what we usually do is actually i won't say i leave everything to our customer success manager but yeah no i'll <laughs> i'll walk you through that right so what we usually do is we can actually we look at with with one of our with one of our vehicles around 100 cores per per day so for most of the farms this is a two to three day business uh where we are you know uh, always you know uh, sending very you know informative leaflets being in constant communication uh being very transparent and very clear in what we're going to do and when and and why uh so for farmer, they just sit back, relax, and open the gate for us. Make sure there's no big dog or other big surprises <laughs> waiting. And yeah, and they can wait for their results. <laughs> uh, sounds dreamy. So they've got the ROI, and it's not going to take up any time. So what? There's no other blocks, is there? Um, sounds great. Um, so you must have a few customers by now, Harry. Who who's on the books? Who have you, who are your customers? Right, so that's a that's a good question. So most, the biggest percentage are are, are companies from the food sector uh, and across the supply chain, right? And they are interested in reducing their their scope three emissions. So the the emissions associated with uh, the environmental footprint of what happens on on the farm level. Mm. Now, and this this is the biggest represent the biggest chunk of our of our customers. Then. We have many project developers and other organizations that are associated with uh, voluntary carbon markets and are interested in funding regenerative practices to generate, as I say, carbon credits. So they would need a way to prove beyond doubt that the, the, the change they paid is actually real. Uh, and this is exactly the value that, uh, that AgriCarbon adds. So we, the evidence that, 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 that we provide in our report 
actually underpins this carbon buyer confidence in, in, in soil carbon sequestration. And the third bit is actually, as you said, farmers and, and, and landowners. I'm talking you know, from, from smallholders to big estates that are interested in both soil health and monetizing their, their good practices that may build more carbon in the, in, in, in the soil. Uh, plus, there, there is big interest from you know, financial institutions that, that you know, they're, they're looking for ways to ensure transparency in their, in their products. And I'll give you an example, right? So uh, an example of a customer. So we are working with First Milk. So this is the, the oh, farmer-owned yeah. uh, um, cooperative in the UK to measure soil carbon at, at scale. Now, their goal uh, is net zero by 2040, I think. Yeah, so it, it's, it's to reach net zero by, by 2040. And this determination is, is very impressive. So we have helped them to validate uh, the soil carbon stocks at... Uh, let me uh, see if I get this right. I think it was over 13,000 13, hectares with uh, around 30, 30 to 35,000 uh, soil sample locations from all four corners uh, of, of the country. So, so that means that now First Milk is equipped with robust data that are auditable and also aligned with all greenhouse gas protocols. And they can use this data to make informed decisions, monitor the progress of, uh, of, of their action. So, so overall, like this is what this is what climate action looks like. And yeah. we're, you know, we're, we're very proud to, to play a part of the, you know, with, with every company's journey. Fantastic. Well, that's that's great, Harry. Um, that sounds amazing. Um, and are there any sort of common things that your customers ask of you? Um, what's I mean, you've spoken a bit, uh, obviously, about the sampling and, and who your market is. Um, but is there anything else that they ask of you? Right. You mean right, what other things you mean apart from? from when we can start right <laughs> <laughs> that's right harry apart right. from when you can start right okay so right but but really so soil carbon sequestration is 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 a fairly new concept right so there are a lot of questions around the particulars and 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 the science behind this like one one of the most common questions is is why on earth is is it so difficult to accurately measure the carbon in the soil, right? Why is it so difficult? Why you need to go to these, you know, extremes to measure it with such accuracy and such precision? So this comes down to, to three things, right? And this is about educating, you know, the, 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 your, your audience and, and the markets in why, why we do what we do in the way we do it. So first of all, there is high natural variation in the soil right so even at small scale so even within a field carbon stocks can easily be between uh, 40 to 200 tons per hectare really yeah so so there's a very big variation in in in, in the soil now usually uh, there there's a very small we're looking at a very small percentage of chains right so when you talk about sequestration you often hear the figure of one ton per hectare per year. And that's used as, as an example. Now, if you look at this over a five year period, this would mean five tons per hectare against an average soil carbon stock of, for example, a hundred tons. So what we need to detect is an increase as low as 5%, right? So we need to be able to detect very small changes. And, and this brings me to my last point, which is that Carbon accounting frameworks, uh, they all require, and, they, and it's usually a bit hidden in plain sight. There, there is an expression that they all use. They require uh, that any increase in, in, in carbon stock over time can be demonstrated to be statistically significant. Right? So this is at every uh, carbon accounting framework. So with, that, with such a small percentage of change, and high level of background variability, the only thing you can do to ensure that 
that you can detect a statistically significant change is get high sample numbers, right? And th these are the issues that we are, you know, we are we are confronting like head on with with, with agricarbon. So that is that is a very uh, a very common question. And I mean, even though there is there is a high uncertainty, a, a fair amount of, of of uncertainty surrounding the standards of uh, of, of carbon accounting and trading. We are very transparent in what we do, and we acknowledge uh, the, the the limitations, right? So we're not we're not cutting any corners in terms in terms of scientific uh, validity of our methods, and we are not hoping, you know, for the standards to lower. So so we know that there, there's there's a lot of work to do, and to to get even better. So for example, another very common question that we have is why on earth do we need so many samples why do i need so many samples to to ensure that and and, and that's fair and that's what we are we are looking for ways and we are working to make this stratification process even more effective and efficient so we are working to extract insights from from our database we are open to you know using help from from satellite technologies on on that aspect so we are constantly trying to improve ourselves so and 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 our offering wow sounds like there's a lot of factors it's amazing how this like there's so many subjects in agriculture all it's all coming back to the data data drilling into the numbers it's the devil's in the detail <laughs> and the more and the more information that we get the um the more we can harness it and um and i think that's going to unlock the the secret to sustainability um what so what's different about agricarbon is there have you got many competitors in the marketplace Right. So when we when we look at our competitors, there's uh, there, there's there's two or three different categories. So what is different about us? The first thing is we have built. If if we look at just the soil testing lab, right, facilities, we have built we we, we have built this for for purpose just to measure soil carbon. So we don't do any any other testing, right? So for most soil testing labs. A, the cost to do what we do properly is prohibitive and, and any attempts to reduce it by compositing, which uh, compositing means blending samples together. Uh, and this is a technique that, that increases the uncertainty and decreases the, the number of samples. And it, it makes it very unlikely uh, that you can measure the small changes as, as, as I explained. And B, there's a very, very wide variability in, in lab quality and, and, and their ability to get consistent results. So consistency is, is another thing that, uh, that makes us different. Now, the other way to do it is by using sensor technologies, such as you know, satellites and drones, for example, or calculate the carbon stocks using models. Now, the issue here is that these all require considerable volume of, of ground truth data for effective calibration and, and, and validation, right? So if you look at, uh, at, at, at Earth observation techniques, they only measure surface reflectance only. So they cannot measure bulk density. And, and as I said, bulk density is the weight of soil in a given volume. So, so how much soil is in, is in there, right? And, and it is very important for calculating the, the, the carbon stocks accurately. And finally, I mean, when it comes to models, they, they have to be scientifically validated for the specific characteristics of the project being assessed. So issues of accuracy, reliability, and, and, and comparability are, 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 are what differentiates us from, uh, from, from, from our competitors at the, at the moment. It's the gold standard, Harry. <laughs> I mean, what I what I usually what I usually tell our clients is that right now, uh, every pound or euro or dollar uh, at some point you sp you spend with us, you actually get very high quality of data, the highest that 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 you can actually get. Right. So there are the things that we do and the way that we do it. So so for example, we are focusing on first measuring to depth right i showed you i used my prop in, uh, uh, before this this i'll do it again so this goes up to one meter 
yeah. where most most of the most of the other uh, kind of like uh, competitors, let's say, they measure up to thirty centimeters. So measuring up to a meter can capture the full carbon migration effects and yeah. benefit of of improving soil structure, right? Uh, I told you about what we do in the lab, which is, you know, we're focusing on dry dumas, uh, sorry, dumas dry combustion mm. and, and measuring bulk density for, for every sample. Uh, we are collecting a very high number of, of samples that is required to deliver statistical confidence in, 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 in what we do. And the last thing is when we do the stratification, we employ a design Instead of, uh, I don't know, I, I remember reading in, in books, right, soil science, the W sampling pattern, right? So this is, this is, uh, this is a, very, a, a very recognized uh, sampling uh, methodology, but we are, we are using stratified sampling uh, design to ensure very good representation of, of measured area and, and capturing infield and whole farm variability. So this actually leads to better statistical uh, detection power. So these are these are the bits that uh, that um, that we that we are focusing on and we we try to get it right uh, every time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Um so in terms of value back to the customer, um you know, we've spoken about the ROI of carbon credits um and and that it's not going to take too much time up um anything else any any other added value i mean there's there's you're right there's there's two things i mean one is as you said unlocking this economic revenue that 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 literally uh, sits uh uh sits there and focusing on 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 soil health so measuring uh, these, you know, being able to measure organic carbon stock changes uh, from, from the sustainable uh, land management practices gives you, uh, it gives you a big value in terms of, you know, private wealth is pouring into land-based investments and, and, and impact facts. So quantifying the awesome, you know, carbon trapping power of, of soil is what allows uh, the value to be shared with farmers. As we can ensure this, as I say, like carbon buyer uh, confidence in the market, and then if you look at the benefits of soil sequestration in terms of um, uh, the co-benefits, so in terms of soil health, crop resilience, flood resilience, biodiversity gains by by supporting microbial activity and and, and increase biological uh, diversity. So this is this is another you know adding value uh, from, uh, from, from, from our testing into understanding the, the benefits of increasing your, uh, your carbon stocks. Great. That sounds amazing. That's a lot of value, Harry. Um, <laughs> so how can I, like, well, there's a tradition on, the, on this um, YouTube channel where we always ask our interviewees how our viewers, our subscribers on the channel, how can they help you on your journey? So is there any way that we can help you, Harry? Well, yes, please. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> even though really, uh, you know, uh, this is a very, this is a transformational technology for the sector, right? So, well, if, if you are a farmer, land manager, uh, you know, a carbon project developer, or general, if you have the, the sustainability in your, you know, in, in your job title or in your heart, right? Please get in touch, and we will be very happy to navigate you in this, uh, frankly, difficult terrain of ensuring that you're getting ac accurate measurement, reporting, and, and verification to prove your your soil carbon benefits and support healthy soils in regenerative farming uh, systems. Now, as as a last bit, I mean, I I have a message. I'm thinking like for 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 everybody, you know. So. We, we are all customers, right? So, and we all engage with many, many brands every day. And we need to make sure that these companies uh, are, are on their, you know, on their environmental claims towards using well-recognized standards and, and, and becoming transparent, right? And, and we are the ones delivering that. So this is what we do here at, at, in AgriCarbon. We help with the, with the transparency of, uh, of, of all the environmental claims when it comes to uh, to soil carbon sequestration. 
Is there anyone checking up on all this? Is there any kind of anyone policing the uh, the false claims? That's the thing. So this is very interesting because we are we are looking we we are we are watching closely this uh, these because there are false claims and it's not that people you know they're they're doing it. Uh, you know, most of the times it is about not interpreting the standards and not understanding uh what what it is uh, it, it is uh, required of you and we see this a lot of times that there are data sets that 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 frankly are not you know that, that they don't have any value because you can't actually see the taint so there are uh, there are it, it is it is a newly forming market and and there are different protocols that that trying to ensure you know as you said policing so try to ensure that uh, any any carbon credits issued are, are are of high value but there's still a lot of uncertainty around that and i mean this is something that uh, that that you know it it's getting better as as we go along and as we learn more, more things but this is something that we need to we need to focus as well well, I'm going to set up a new YouTube channel called The Agri Food Criminals, and I'm going to expose everyone who's doing it wrong. Um, and um, but um, anyway, Harry, thank you for informing us on this. It's been really, really interesting. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, and I still thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. So subscribe now and click the bell so you'll be notified when we speak to more pioneers of the agri-food industry who are leading the way to a sustainable, low carbon and regenerative future. Thanks for watching. Are you an agri-food pioneer? Get in touch now to arrange your interview.